truth is a lonely place, but it is the only place. If we don't deal with truth, what you're going to end up having is the fiction that has brought us to the place to where democracy right now is in jeopardy. here on the coast are uh, black, indigenous, and people of color who are on the front line of the impact of climate change, uh, particularly here in Brunswick, where there is a tremendous amount of flooding that results from tropical storms, sea level rise, and they are experiencing these uh, impacts at alarming rate. September of last year, uh, and we had an unusual rainy day. Uh, and yes, we're on the coast, so high tide plus rain means flooding. And we probably had about maybe three feet of water that were just standing here in this area. And in light of what we experienced last year and what it cost us here, we decided that we want to do our part in trying to protect what we have here. And so we started boarding up the holes in which the water can infiltrate underneath the structure and put sandbags up. And so it's, if we can't have the structures in place that will protect us, we have to protect ourselves. But everybody can't afford sandbags. Everybody can't afford to always move away or protect themselves when flooding happens. Some people have lived in this, in this particular city all their lives can't afford to go anywhere else. And they can barely afford to stay where they are. And those are the people who really need the funding to come in to improve the area and the conditions in which they live. This is where these winding roads have led. I don't think that people even recognize that climate change is a spiritual destruction and we have transferred faith into fear. If you ain't got no courage, you ain't got no faith. And if you ain't got no faith, you ain't got no God. And that's what's done happened to us. I will rise up. I will not fall. Churches have dug real deep into their coffers and are meeting the needs of communities that are being impacted by climate change. I think that the federal government should be also investing in robust, rich, bold economic recovery as well as infrastructure. This will be the day. People don't want to do the new restorative jobs because it costs training. But I think we have to sort of take a step back and pause for a minute to say, but what is it costing us in the future? But if we are to walk in the path that Jesus has set before us, perhaps we should let the idea of scarcity, we shouldn't let it stop us so easily. Um, as I referenced in my sermon today that God can do amazing things with just a little bit, but we have to do our part as well. Thinking that we don't have the time or the money or the energy might be self-limiting when we actually have access to much more than we can ever imagine. I will stay strong, never giving up.